Hello everyone, Attack Power here with probably the most difficult of all the deck building videos here with Armia Krajova. If you guys enjoy these, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider checking out the Patreon link down below to really help me out and consider checking out attackpowergaming.com. Alrighty folks, so this Polish division is the hardest of everything to say and I practiced. I really, really did. I really practiced. I just realized there were one or two units here that I didn't practice, so you'll know when I get there, but I really did practice. So my Polish speakers... Let me know in the comments if I totally missed the ball or if this was an improvement or if I somehow made it worse. But Armia Krajowa, one of the, uh, probably the worst divisions in the game. Uh, no, not, maybe not worse, but definitely C tier, pushing towards the D tier kind of thing. I wouldn't put it in F, uh, but it is a tough division to use. And it's just another one of those divisions that has just been left behind so hard with the power creep of the game um, and really has not received the necessary buffs in order to keep up with the constantly creeping meta. Uh, the infantry desperately need a buff. I hope in this next patch they do actually buff this division. I think this division is super unique and really fun, but it is a really tough division. Um, even if they buff the infantry, which the infantry are really good if they get a little bit of a buff. The tank tab is obviously very limited and kind of weird for what it is. The support tab is almost non-existent. Your AA tab is horrendous. Your... RD tab does not help you out at all. Your air tab is not that much better at the end of the day. It, it just doesn't do a lot of things, uh, but it is cool. Again, I really think they need to buff these infantry to the moon, and this is one of the few times I actually do think they need to buff it, not necessarily nerf everything else, because uh, these infantry are never as crushing as it feels like they should have been based on the fact that's all this division really does is put out good infantry. So we are building it balanced. Uh, half your units don't come till C phase. I don't really see how you play this division in a, an aggressive form. Um, I guess if you're just going to balls to the wallet on just like, uh, I like just push an infantry and your couple of heavy tanks and like really going for it, but like, you don't even have the arty to back it up. Really. You obviously have like no way to support those AA to support those pushes. You don't get any real good air force until B phase. Ah, I find it hard to play this in an aggressive fashion i really do and not that's not just because of me this time so let's dive in here to the recon tab you have some cool options here so here we go so this is just sniper right we have a nice 10 point single unit uh female sniper here uh so nice to see that represented here in game uh 10 point snipers are fine they're not anything overwhelming they do die really easily like you have to remember these do not very last very long and you actually might want to really look at these as just 10 point recon teams um because they will die. Like, you really don't want these fighting at all. So I would suggest these are more for 10-point, pop them around and actually get some recon information. Although, again, they got a sniper, so they can shoot stuff. I love how this woman is, like, driving all by herself, although there's a guy in the van. I don't know where that guy goes when this horse disappears. But, uh, yeah. So our first here unit here, Czechy Sviad, a uh, heavy scout, essentially. Um, they are a four-man team, 25 points, but the 25 is because of the unit here the transport that comes with it 20 points really at base uh two submachine guns an mg26 and the beautiful grb39 anti-tank rifle these are the same at rifles that the uh Sikrungs walk around with and they're very good at rifles short range at only 300 meters but a beautiful 60 millimeters penetration and five damage is actually really high um so that's why i like these guys they can do really quite well uh now arguably Maybe you don't want these. You can switch them out for more of these guys, the Shade Shadegi here. Uh, but these guys, they definitely have some utility, and it's fun to kind of sneak these around. These also come with the Kubus, which is a Piat wielding armored car with a DT machine gun uh, and armor on all sides. Technically, this thing is really good for five points. For five points, this thing's actually kind of bonkers. Um, now, don't expect this to go, like, save you in a serious situation. Uh, it's only got that 200 meters of penetration. Uh, excuse me, 200 meters of range, which means basically the only place this can ever really get an AT kill is from behind a building where it ambushes something or in the yellow forest. So, yeah, it's not... I always want it to be good, and I try it. I'm like, God, this thing is awful. But it is an annoying five-point unit with a machine gun. So something to be aware of uh, that can definitely be very useful. Then we have the Shade Shadegi here. These guys are great. 25-point unit with grenades that they can toss around. Seven-man squad, not bad. I mean, it still will probably die if it gets hit by a grenade back in its face. Uh, but it's still nice to have a 
relatively medium-sized chunky squad uh, in your recon tab that tosses grenades for fun. That is super useful. Then we have the BA-10s, which unfortunately don't come until B-phase and technically have lower availability because usually you get 5 and A-phase unvetted, but here they're coming in 5 and B-phase with no vet. So definitely not great. Uh, the Zviadoche here are really, they're just the two-man, like, recon off cloud team nothing super special here there's more snipers you have the universal carry but that doesn't even come in until b and while these actually can be kind of annoying i don't really want to spend 20 points on them especially in b phase um and then we have the other card a uh, shot Shadege here i wouldn't fault anyone for like taking out the uh chesky's viad here and putting in more of these guys like in b phase that makes sense to me. Uh, might not be a bad choice, honestly. But you do have some infantry that can hold their own in CQC. That's why I don't feel like I'm strained to bring these. And having the cheeky AT unit that can sneak up on things is pretty useful, actually. So the infantry tab. Here we go. Going to warm up the tongue. Blah, 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 blah. I've got red lemon, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. All right, here we go. So uh, definitely an, a neat combination of units. I, again, just wish they were all a little bit stronger in general. Uh, but they are cheap. You're definitely not paying much. So we start off here with the group of Stromova. Uh, this unit is an eight-man team with Fanatical and Raiders. So some great stats down here. Uh, with three MP40s, two Stens. I didn't even look up how to say this submachine gun. Oopsies. Uh, I'm not even going to try because I'm actually... Uh, actually, it's like cut off. I like actually just can't see it. Is there a E back there? Escalva? Vika? I'm sorry, it's cut off. This one I'm not even taking. I'm not taking responsibility for this one. Uh, and then it has a grenade. So, yeah, it's a good CQC unit. Eight man. Toss of grenades has exceptional stealth, of course, because of the Raider trait. Uh, these submachine guns are not the best at all. I'm trying to think. Okay, so somehow this submachine gun's even worse than the MP40, it looks like. So, yeah, this is definitely not a great loadout in terms of submachine guns. But it's a 20-point grenade-throwing team. And 20-point grenade-throwing teams are good because they're 20 points, and they throw a grenade. So, like, there's not really anything to complain about here. Uh, pretty good unit. Okay, Obko Uh This uh, translates to foreigner, by the way, because uh, I know this now. 13-man <laughs> uh, squad, nice and chunky for 20 points. And then you get uh, you get a submachine gun. You get eight straight pole rifles, which is definitely a good thing. Three M1 carbines mixed in there, and then a Madsen automatic rifle this unit is actually very good i mean you get 13 men so it's chunky they have a really interesting set of weapons carbines the m1 carbine is is actually like just barely a step off of an mp40 it's got the same range it's got a very actually similar rate of fire uh accuracy and all because it actually pumps out a very similar amount of damage to an mp40 now it's not as good as it but it is close um so it's th these this is actually a really good unit overall now is it crushing units along range no but do i love these guys in like yellow forest and stuff absolutely they shred pretty hard actually in those situations they can do quite well then we have the uh the patazanchi here uh this is a grenadier squad that's what this is this is just a Grenadier squad. There's really nothing special about it. There's nothing unique about it. Um, it it's nine men. It's got an MG34, like, and it's got literally just Grenadier unit weapons, except for the heat shell, the heat grenade here, which, I mean, yeah, I mean, it can kill anything, but it's still a heat grenade that you got to get in really close to use successfully. Um, then we have the uh, Chiho Chiemni here. Uh, the leader. He does come with a Piat, double Bren, and two Sten. So a nice four-man squad here with smoke as well. Comes with a laundry list of traits here. Leader, tank buster, radio, smoke layer, and commando. So the radio's nice. Commando's great. It keeps this guy alive a lot better. Um, so yeah, a very good leader overall, and you don't really have any others that come with radio, and none of these other guys have, like, higher availability. So it's not really worth bringing them over. This dude in A phase, the little radio can be helpful. And then we have the Ohonitsi. Oh, Nitsi. Oh, Nitsi. Nit. Oh, oh, Nitsi. Yeah, I think I got it. Um, this is like your bread and butter unit here. We have a card in A, a card in B, and a card in C, all single vet with a really high availability. Nine vet units at still one vet is really good. It's a 15 man squad. It's huge. Uh, you get two submachine guns here, 12 rifles, the Browning automatic rifle, which is actually a pretty good automatic rifle and then you get a Molotov cocktail on this unit so these guys are fantastic they are volunteers translated again successfully go attack power doing his research um so yeah this unit is great this is like this is what makes this division dangerous in CQC um I still think this unit needs a teeny bit of buff I'm not gonna lie maybe not this unit specifically like this unit but all the units around it uh definitely could use some sort of love um 
maybe a second MG on this thing. That would make it really, really good. But like maybe that this division needs this unit to be really, really good. Like that's the thing. Um, but yeah, this unit's great. I mean, it's not absolutely buck kicking because just the fact that it has a Molotov does not make it magically super good at CQC. Um, it gives it a fighting chance at CQC. But when you really look, there's only two submachine guns. There's a lot of rifles, but rifles don't put out the damage that submachine guns put out. The automatic rifle is nice as well. Again, there's enough here to make this functional at CQC. But if you come up against a truly CQC unit, I'm not even talking like Sturm Pioneers. I'm talking like, you know, any any kind of Sturmaviki or something like that, or, you know, just one of those units that actually really has some CQC clout. Uh, these guys won't beat those single-handedly. Uh, they will survive. There's 15 men. They could go a long time, but there is limitations to this unit. Then in B phase, we have some more Pachezanchi, and then we have another Grupa Stomova. This one has an MG42. This one's the stronger one. Has Fanatical again, Raiders. It comes with a Panzerfaust, MG42, three rifles, and four MP44s. So this unit is pretty deadly. Okay, uh, a nice a nice unit to be sure. Uh, it does come with pretty good availability with the 612-18 availability at one vet. Um, but again, it's one of those units that kind of falls in a bit of a middly place. Uh, you're kind of almost forced to fight in like a yellow forest with these units. Otherwise, you're just firing three rifles in an MG42, and that is not something to get really excited about. Uh, then we have another Onitsi unit here. And then we have the uh, Pachezantos uh, leader here. We have more leaders because we have the space for more leaders, and you kind of need them, and you don't have an artillery battery unit, so you would need leaders here. So we have a six-man team, Browning, three carbines, uh, two MP44s, and a Faust Patron. Now, something important to note, this is not a very good AT weapon because it only does eight damage, so it requires two penetrations to kill something, and that is asking for a lot when a unit is only 120 meters away from their target. Uh, things, Other things you could bring, you could bring this uh, Strelsko here, uh, this leader, I mean, you get eight of them, I guess, which is nice. It's more than the six here. This guy's a bit chunkier, and also, again, he does have the AT. It's not like it's useless, but it's yeah, like emergency, emergency situation. And then one, whore, one more card here, Ohonitsi. Ohonitsi here. Hop into the tank tab. This is one of the most flavorful tank tabs in the game. I think the new the new French resistance division is going to look something like this. Uh, so we have a card of M1441s here. Oh, I, I apologize. Back over here, things we are not taking. Uh, the Sapazi. Uh, this might be confusing to some people. I find these guys to be awful. Uh, yes, they are a double flamer unit, and leaving these at home kind of burns me in a deep way. But they are so weak. They die literally a, a stiff gust of wind kills these units. Um... They are just so fragile. So, so, so fragile. And I know people are going to disagree with me and be like, Attack Power, you're an idiot. But I, I just don't like this unit. I, I find it to be so underwhelming. I keep thinking, like, you need to have three of these at once to even not die to anything. It's it's rough. I I have such a hard time not bringing a double flamer unit. It feels so wrong. But this unit needs to be buffed up to five men. It's kind of ridiculous that it's only four. I It just dies. It just dies so fast. It dies after one combat. I I don't, I just don't like it. Uh, the Patizanchi, uh, uh, the Belangochi, Belangoshi, uh, uh, they're like, you could switch these out for a Patizanchi. I, I could definitely see that. Um, they're one man weaker, but they're also five points cheaper, but their loadout is, is definitely worse across the board. It's like a weird hybrid unit that's just not good at anything and i'm not even saying that because my usual hatred of hybrid units this one really is not good at anything um so yeah that's what we're leaving at home here i know the sappers i i understand sapezi here is is arguable i get that uh tanks here m1441 it's a nice little you know your little tiny tank italian tank that fires guns it dies really easy. It, it's just kind of there. Although it will save you from like armor cars and stuff. Don't underestimate its use in that respect. Then we have a Hetzer. Yay! The Chvat here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a Hetzer. It does Hetzery things. Then we have a Tiger. It's a Tiger. You only get one. Again, note that these are all singular units, except for the M14. Uh, a Panther G. A Panther G. And in C phase, though, you do get eight. Only eight, though. T-34-76 model 1943, which is the low armor T-34s. Uh, so, yeah. In the ninth hour, 11th hour here, you get the, the mediocre medium armor. T-70, I would love these things if they didn't come in C phase, but they come in C phase, and therefore they're kind of useless. Um, leaders, B phase, again, C phase. I guess you could bring the T-70 leader in B phase. That may not be bad. Maybe I should be doing that instead. 
but I don't even uh, the, the M14s are kind of needed actually to survive like early rando armor rushes that's my issue but maybe it's just better than the T70 leaders we'll, we'll switch it out we'll try that out uh, Panzer IV is one singular Panzer IV I'm sorry but I can't spend a whole card on one singular Panzer IV uh, there's just better things here and then another Panther G if you wanted three Panther G's support tab not a ton here, although I already hate my choices here, but I, know, I, I understand why. Uh, oh, I forgot to look up the, the Flamer unit here. Uh, no. Mjotsats. Mjotsats Agnia. I'm sure that's horrible. I'm sorry. You can already tell where I forgot to research a unit. And then we have MG42 Officer and the Supply. Things were not taking the Bogward. Bogwards are not very good. They're fun. They're funny. You only get one, though. It's not even worth that. Maxims, you have MG42s. I would love to get this Assault Gun in here, but it doesn't come till B phase, and that's a bummer. And it has lower availability, which is just like another kick in the balls for this division. Uh, I understand why, historically. I get why they have lower availability, but like it's just like, wow. Let's 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 beat on this division a little bit harder. Uh, then, AT tab. Uh, we already have a card. So the Armata WZ thirty six thirty seven mil. These are phenomenal, fast firing, twenty rounds a minute, seventy millimeters of penetration. It's not a lot of penetration, but doesn't even have a little bit of HE to work with. Uh, these are great. You definitely want these at only twenty five points. Then we have the Piats. Uh, I mean, Piats are so bad, but you kind of need them, like kind of desperately. Um, then we have the pack 38. We have a pack 40 card here. Only come in A, of course. Then you have the Sabatotsi. I didn't research this one. I, I'm sorry. Uh, does have a Panda Shrek. This unit is great. I mean, it's a six man squad with a Panda Shrek, two random G43s, and a grenade. That's why I have them in B phase for the 12, so I can actually use these as like grenade tossing infantry. Uh, I'm sure we'll survive A phase. Lols. The, uh, the 45 mil doesn't come until B phase, and at that point, I'm just bringing the Zis 3 instead because we kind of need some AT that can actually pen something. I don't need more light 45 mil AT, although you know I do love a good 45 mil. Anti air options here are basically limited to only two things a 20 mil in A phase. And since this is your only AA through all of A and B phase, I, I can't even I can't even tell you to vet this like and that's so painful but I, you have to bring these unvetted just just to have something C phase you get some 37 mils not that that's saving the day or anything the rest of it is utter garbage uh, you can bring a Hotchkiss in lols actually Hotchkisses are okay in terms of trucks I think they're the best truck in the game uh, I'm talking like garbage truck I'm not talking like truck with a flak rilling on it or something uh, but like just these like dinky trucks that we find in random divisions. This is probably the best one. Already tap. Wait, I want to double check. Yeah, this is coming in with the browning thing, and the browning thing's not good, but we're bringing it anyway just out of desperation. Uh, just to have something else there in a desperate pinch. All right, already tab. Not really anything here. We have this unit, which is very good. Uh, this little unit here is pretty fantastic. I'm actually going to unvet it down to... to I, I want the extra rounds of fire, but I also need some Marty. These guys are like basically fire faster than mortars. They do. I mean, they fire faster than mortars even. Uh, they have, I mean, the, the range is technically, the, the range is technically infinite. It's not, but it is like, unless you're starting in one corner of the map and firing all the way to the other corner, this thing will cover the entire map. So the range is kind of irrelevant. These are, again, actually quite good. They don't come in with supply, though. Lols. And then you have the Habika, the Abika, uh, the Abika uh, howitzer here. It's the really bad 105 that the Germans have. Um it's it's not good, but you kind of have to take it, and you only get them in A. Uh, you could drink some mortars. Mortars are fine, but I'm just taking the howitzer stuff that we have. These don't come until C. This comes in in B. I just, no, I just hate it. I mean, sure, fine, do it, since it's the only good thing in here, but, like, oh, God, barf. Air tab. You have some things here. You have some things here. Do those things make up for the many things you're missing? No, not at all. But we do have an A-Face card of IL-2KRs, and these can still be pretty fantastic, honestly. If your opponent underestimates these things flying around, they will be punished badly by these. Then we have the Yak-9s. Yak-9s are not good. Uh, they're relatively slow for a fighter. They are extremely underarmed. They have a hard time shooting anything down at all. And you're vet-locked to only getting two of them in A-Face. So, lulls on Air Force, on AA. Because remember, your AA also sucks, so this is what you get. Uh, B phase, you do get the Yak 9T, which is definitely an upgrade, but it's even slower than the Yak 9. 
Um, so if you're expecting to catch fast things, you will not. Again, another lol moment there. Uh, then you have the IL-2 M3, which is a very underwhelming AT plane with the weak rockets here, uh, eight of those, at a relatively mid speed, but very good resilience. It will not get shot down easily, I will say that. Uh, but you will need probably two runs at something. And I am bringing these in B phase. Maybe I should be bringing them in A phase, but we have AT. We'll, we'll, we'll do something. We got Tigers and Panthers, though. You got stuff. You got stuff. You got stuff. Uh, and then finally, the IL-2 M3 with the napalm. This thing's pretty funny. Can clear a, a large area. Uh, honestly, there's not really many other good choices. Yes, the U2s are here if you want to do a, a hilarious U2 run at something. But these are horrible. Like, hilariously horrible. Yes, and they, they are on purpose just awful. They're so bad. This U2 cluster bomber is so terrible. <laughs> like, I tried this thing, and I actually got it to a target, like, successfully. Remember, this thing's moving at 135 kilometers an hour. It's so painful. Traction's almost outrun this thing. Um, and it was so painful to watch because I actually got it there, and it didn't even kill the target. And it was it was so depressing. Um, yeah, these are bad. Uh, there's more IL-2 M3s. Believe me, the moment you experience these, you'll you'll not want to bring more because they're just so underwhelming. The IL-2 M3 with the frag rockets might be okay, but uh, eh, maybe maybe they're better than the napalm. The napalm will kill stuff though. This thing sometimes will let you down. P-51 doesn't come till C phase, so meh on that. Uh, and it's not even like an incredible fighter. It's extremely fast. I'll give it that. It does have technically pretty good damage. Uh, but P-51's kind of underperform. So, yeah. Armenia Krajova. Not an easy division, specifically to say. Uh, but not an easy division to play. Very interesting, though. If you want a unique challenge, that definitely tries one. I'm not saying this is bad. I've seen people, like, pilot this thing to great success. But it is a very challenging division. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider checking out that Patreon link down below. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.